going on guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD. No introduction needed on this video. I'm working on a GL 1500 CF. I think it's a Valkyrie. Um, and this applies to any GL 1500 out there. With the slave cylinder that's slapped to the back of the motor that's really hard to get to. Alright, as you can see, I've already removed that kickstand bracket right there. Um, that's important to get out of the way. But this video is going to be straightforward. Uh, removal of the slave cylinder. You can replace this whole system if you want to. If you want to spend the money and get a brand new system, that's fine. I'm going to show you guys how to clean it properly. Make it nice and smooth and working like it should. This one was slam stuck. When I mean slam stuck, after even bleeding it out, the clutch lever would no longer move. It was just locked. So that means something's going on. Start by just getting all the fluid out of there. Um, I already previously bled it, but there was still some fluid in the line. Disconnect that stuff. Um, it's good to go ahead and loosen up the banjo bolt for that line as well as the top one. And you'll see on your bike, um, again, with the GL1500 um, GL Gold Wing, uh, either the Valkyrie or the Gold Wing, it will, they all work the same way. They're all the same part. Loosen up that slave cylinder, pull it out. There's a rod behind it. I try to disconnect it and kind of push it back in so I can kind of maneuver that slave cylinder out of there. And boy, do we have a mess here. I leave the rod installed, okay, inside that seal. Look, look at that thing. Look at that. It's disgusting. Honestly, you see this all the time with bikes that sit. No one wants to change the fluid out on them. It crusts up. That's straight up brake fluid that has dried up, and it locks that piston inside of that slave cylinder so you gotta get creative on, on how you clean these things out obviously I'm working on a bench it's kind of up to uh, I would say belly button height and I'm able to work and lean in and see what I can see the best that I can but you gotta use what you got um, brass brushes work great plastic brushes work great contact cleaner I have a little angled flathead screwdriver that I use as a little special tool that I bent a while ago to kind of get in on that angle you need to get all of that crap out that back seal that you're looking at right now that black one you can replace that okay um, you can use, use a flathead screwdriver and go right towards the center and just destroy it and pry it out of there it will come out you can replace it this one's not leaking at all it doesn't look like it's super super swollen like I've seen some before um, I'm not gonna replace this one this one's fine if you wanted to it's like a four dollar seal you can just go ahead and do it um, but I didn't. So, use Scotch Bright pads. That works really, really well um, for scrubbing that kind of stuff. I even pulled out a little like mirror here in a second just so I can see that bottom ledge because I can't see it. It's it's virtually impossible to see. So, make sure that that spot on the motor is great. Okay. If you have any questions about if your slave cylinder might be leaking, just look on that back cover. You may see all of the engine paint coming off of that. That, like that silver color that they use draining down the back of that case right there and that's a sign that it is leaking all right just by simply grabbing getting on the ground looking up at it most often that's where you can tell that, that it's having a problem this one was very apparent after I was done um, bleeding the system so nice and clean contact cleaner just keep your area nice and clean like again I, I, I leave that little rod in there to not get anything inside that seal now, to the slave cylinder. These are the two seals that I'll be using to replace it. That center one as well as the cup seal. You can get that part number. I'll put it in the description for you. But we're just going to go after it. All right. Um, if you wanted to, you could uh, leave the slave cylinder all locked in with the banjo bolts and the, and the you know, bleeder that's on there. And then just pump it out with the clutch lever. And it's going to make a huge mess once that pops that seal pops out or that slate that little piston in the center pops out I leave it in in this case the it was locked it was not going anywhere so I could not do that and you'll see what I mean here in a minute when I go to try to get that center piston out of the slave cylinder but spending a bunch of time just scrubbing and cleaning and verifying that this thing still can be reused some of them are too pitted and I wouldn't trust it um, that outer portion is not uh, as crucial as what um, the inside of the slave looks like so you can see I put the uh, bleeder rod back on I try to use compressed air that's 100 psi not budging it at all okay I try to push the piston back down so I can kind of clean you can see I use a little socket and hammer action to kind of push that piston back down so I can clean that um, surface on its way out you know I, I don't want anything to try to 
score up the metal on its way out of there. So push it, pushing it back in the best up way that I could with some, um, there's some worth, uh, anti-slip or slip, you know, it's, it's WD-40. It's, it's glorified WD-40. It's over, overpriced WD-40, we'll say. Soak it all in there, and then I'm going to use my best friend, Ziblo Torch. Okay, heating it up will expand the metal and allow that piston to kind of slide right out of there um, with no problem. Usually a two-minute rule on something aluminum like this. Nothing crazy. You're going to, you may destroy the seal on the inside. We don't care. Bingo. And there we go. It's out, it's hot, but now we can see the inside of the surface. We got that slave cylinder piston out of there with the uh, spring behind it, and now we're going to spend the rest of our time verifying that this piston is still good to be used. These parts are all replaceable. Again, if you don't want to do any of this, I don't care. Replace the whole system. Put a brand new one in. But the seals are a couple bucks. You'll spend some time cleaning it, and it will work just like it should be. All right, so I'm kind of... Cleaning this up with Scotch Bright, make sure there's no heavy pitting um, go going on, and there wasn't any. It was totally worth the rebuild. All right, so nice clean piston, both the piston and the uh, the, the housing all look good. You can kind of see what I'm working with with that piston. It's not deteriorated. It's not pitted. It's fine. So seal goes in. You can put a little grease behind it if you'd like. It keeps that seal kind of ni nice and healthy. I grab a socket that's you a good rule of thumb with seal pressing or hammering in is you want it to be about 75 to 80 percent of the whole seal surface okay because you want to get it on that metal ledge of that seal if that makes sense to you um, and we want that seal to be flush with the surface okay right here we're verifying that the slave piston is moving freely inside of it there's no hiccups it's not locking in or anything like that without the seal on it and it's like butter you know it's how it should be cup seal is very important in the direction that it goes you'll see that it's a called a cup seal because it cups backwards towards the fluid that's how we want it to be you see right there there's a cup side and a flat side flat side faces out towards um, the back of the tire and the cup seal the cupped section faces inward we're trying to keep that fluid inside all right, so we'll just slap that in there, kind of pop it a couple times, make sure that it's nice and locked in, right? Then we just kind of, it's really easy to kind of get it back inside of that housing. I use some dot four brake fluid with some Q-tips. Here in a second, you'll see. Make sure you don't forget the spring, okay? <laughs> I've done it before. There's that dot four, some Q-tips, get them nice and wet. Lube the inside of that on its way in. You'll see that 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 portion right here I'm holding is tapered, so it's kind of easy to get that seal inside of there without flipping it on its head or whatever, or inside and out or inverted or whatever you want to say. Use your fingers, grab one side, plop it on in there. Make sure that it is you know going all the way down and back up again. That's what that's what we want. Next, onto the banjo bolts. These also get crushed inside of them. I have some small little wire brushes that I use to clean these out. No need to replace them if you don't need to. Um, use a light to verify. We just want to clean out all of the passages on its way, on that fluid's way into that slave cylinder. We don't want anything, any crud getting back inside of there. Okay, so really easy, straightforward. Okay. As usual, insole is reverse. Okay, we're gonna, I like to put that rod on there first. I'm going back in, it's just, you see I'm fighting it a little bit, but it makes it easier, trust me. Um, don't bolt it down up top yet, just leave it loose. Push that bad boy back in there. There's no gasket or silicone, don't do any of that crap. Just put it in there n nice and dry, that, that's how we need it to be. If you wanna put some grease on that, like I said, that seal in the center for that rod, do it, okay? I always replace banjo bolt crush washers. They call it like oil seal crush washers or whatever. They're expensive, they're like three or four bucks per washer, it's ridiculous. Don't blame me, don't blame Honda, blame everything else, okay? Replace them though because you don't want that stuff to leak down again There would be four total for that top bleeder and as well as that banjo bolt on that side Okay, don't over tighten the banjo bolt. If there is a torque spec on it I'll try to put it in the description for you, but it's just Tighten it until it seats and then give it a nice half turn. That's all you need now very important part that I see people screw up on a lot The kickstand when you're going back together See that hole right there? 
that is a locating hole for your kickstand switch all right if you just slap that kickstand back that little switch that you took off that little eight millimeter bolt you will bend the crap out of the tab and then you will ruin your kickstand switch okay so that's a guide so when your kickstands up and down it tells the system that it's up and down but i see a lot of guys who think they know what they're doing and they go to put that switch back on there and they bend the tab kickstand and you can try to bend it back but that's how you locate the kickstand switch we need that to be right all right, that wraps it up, guys. Again, this is for a hydraulic clutch system. For you cable-operated clutch users out there, this has nothing to do with you at all. So any clutch model that has a hydraulic reservoir up top, this pertains to you because they'll all use a sim very similar system. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to join the mailing list to get notifications when new stuff comes out. And I will say at the end of the month, I'm not going to say anything right now, but me and a close friend of mine have been working on something for the past couple months that I think you guys are really going to want to know about. That's all I'm going to say, and if you do need more help on your motorcycle, I have a private Facebook group for members only. Check out the link in the description to find out more. Get more help on your bike. Join a community of riders who love to help, love wrenching, and love to just share and post about whatever they're working on. As always, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys some quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. See you next time. Later.